All right, we spent most of the session in the market trying to get its footing. It looks like it may have, maybe a repeat of yesterday. Uh, of course, there's so many questions still swirling around, a lot of frustration over it, long-term direction. We know, though, however, when you pull, out, pull it out enough, it's always to the upside. The question, of course, how to reap those benefits, even maximize your participation in the market to create individual prosperity and generational wealth. That's what everybody wants to know, and I've got just the family to ask. Joining me now, Payne Capital Management President Ryan Payne, CIO Bob Payne, and financial advisor Chris Payne. All right, guys, don't worry. No pain jokes. <laughs> I just said it's a reunion. I, I, uh, yeah, right? I, I've been through it. Well, it was that potato salad got to me. Uh, I got to start with Dad. This is beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, when did you start talking to your sons about investing, and what did you say that make him say, okay, we want to do this as well? Well, you know, we started, uh, I started back in the industry in the 70s at uh, Merrill Lynch, and at one point in my career, I had a little consulting business going, so we got a chance to see what was happening in the rest of the industry. So we decided that the future of the industry was not the banks, the insurance companies, the wirehouses. We started, uh, you know, an independent firm. Mm -hmm. So that, that was in 2008. Uh, Ryan uh, left Merrill Lynch. Two weeks later, Merrill Lynch went under. They had, a, you know, Bank of America had to bail them out. Now, Chris, don't get me wrong on this. According to Ryan, Merrill went under because he left. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, it, and then after two years, uh, we found out it was a lot of work. So we hired Chris to get in there and, and, and chip in to help out. Chris, uh, for a lot of folks watching this show, um, this is their first real period of, of adversity. Uh, you know, it was amazing. You got into 2020. You did amazing. You did pretty good last year. Some bumps in the road in the middle of the year. Uh, for people who may be new to the market and this is their first time facing this sort of adversity, what are you telling them? Well, I mean, I think the first and foremost, the key to making money is to be invested. So the bottom line is, you know, you got to be in. And you know what? The market's cheap right now. Now's a great time to be getting in. And, you know, you always want to make sure that your portfolio is diversified. You know, owning one asset class, the old saying is, your investments don't love you back. So don't love, fall in love with your investments. But don't fall out of love with investing in general. As hard as that can be sometimes. I mean, we know that because the more it goes down, the more pain is out there. And, you know, and just even talking about finding things that are cheap, right? Even that's sort of objective. I got a list here of, uh, of uh, the S&P uh, 500, the 11 sectors. And the stuff that a lot of people are saying is cheap or, you know, hide out in, it's not cheap relatively, right? Real estate is at a, a 29 PE, utilities 24 PE, healthcare to 23 PE. So even things that may be cheaper in some way or form, Ryan, than other stocks, relatively, you know, to their own history, they might be expensive. It makes it pretty difficult to even find a place to hide out, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm glad you asked me because obviously I'm the brains or the looks. <laughs> and yeah, no, it's a good point. This is where diversification is so critical here, Charles, because like every asset class is working the same. You and I talked about value a year ago. I said, be careful of the growth trade. Growth trade at this point has collapsed. Um, and value stocks are still cheap. I mean, if you look at like your banks but right now. But the fence all of a sudden took, went crazy, right? I mean, is that an sure. area like now, you know, because we get a lot of folks who jump on a bandwagon, let's face it. Would you yeah. buy defensive names here? Or would you stick with the value names knowing that ultimately they're going to come up? I, I think you do here because I think you have to, you know, question is, are we going to recession? Maybe, maybe not. But the market's already priced it in. And by the time we're in a recession, if we get in one, markets are going to be higher, right? Markets are going to be way ahead of the news here. And I think that's a really important point. Bob, what do you make of the industry itself? Uh, you know, there was a Gallup poll out today, and every, every institution saw a major decline in how people feel about it. The president had the biggest decline, 15 percentage points, followed by the Supreme Court, but nothing was unscathed. First time I've ever seen uh, police go down a little bit. Wall Street might be at the bottom of the list. You know, people don't want to invest, and they just don't trust Wall Street. What do you sell us, folks? Well, I, you know, I don't blame them. I, I wouldn't trust Wall Street. You know, Wall Street doesn't do anything to, to let anybody trust them, right? The hardest part for us in onboarding a new client is to, tr to get them to trust us, right? Now, you know you're trustworthy, right? I know I'm trustworthy. But you can't convince someone who's been burnt by your industry that, you know, you are trustworthy. So gaining someone's trust takes time, something that you get in hindsight. You know, you don't get up front. Right. But, you know, I, I think with a lot of times when you see what happens with folks, they let their political beliefs in interfere with their investing beliefs. Right, right. You know, I saw a great ch chart the other day. It showed that uh, when there's a, a Republican president in, right. Republicans think the economy's doing great. Right. When there's a Democratic president in, the Democrats think the economy's doing great. Can't let your political beliefs interfere with your investing strategy. Yeah, I've, I've had that trouble, you know, uh, when a Democrat's in, getting conservatives to invest in the market and vice versa, uh, you know, and it's sometimes it's like pulling teeth. But it's a $23 trillion economy, and we're talking about individual companies. You're, you're investing in these companies, not the person. Exactly. <laughs> and if you invest in the right one, you're going to make a whole lot of money. Where do we go from here then, Chris? 
with well, this market? You know, I think it goes Because back it's easy to say, don't worry about it and invest. Long term, it'll be great and pull up a 100-year chart. Yeah, you got proof. But day to day, that gut-wrenching pain is tough to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things I talk to my clients about is the importance of having an investment strategy that's based on your lifetime long-term goals. You know, for most people, that's to become financially independent. And you know what? You're not going to be able to get to that point if you're out of the market. If you're just sitting in cash, you're not going to be able to overcome inflation, which I think we're seeing a little bit of that right now. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not going to be able to get to that point where you become financially independent and don't have to go back to work again. Ryan, generational wealth, um, is that still something everyone should believe is possible? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, I, I'm still waiting for my inheritance hasn't come yet. <laughs> but, you know, the truth is, yes. I mean, look. He said, you said you had the brains. You should have figured it out by now. It ain't coming. <laughs> Why am I still working? <laughs> uh, absolutely, right? I mean, the, the, the stock market is a great wealth creator, right? I mean, look, and Chris has mentioned dividends. Dividends have increased over inflation over the last 70 years. It's right. like a built-in inflation hedge because companies raise their prices. Right. You benefit when you're a shareholder. It's something all Americans can participate in. All right, well, we got to leave it there. It's fantastic. Fantastic. It's so great having all three of you in studio. And I, I have to remind the audience, I'm not affiliated with Payne Capital, but we're all brothers, right? So Ryan, <laughs> Bob, Chris, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, great work.